You look at the intri intricacies and dynamics of interpersonal relationships with great insight and intimacy. What's the source of this? I think the source of that is basically being someone that observes people up close and for long periods of time I think you actually start to be quite vigilant about what people are doing and what characters are doing and what the different and varied people in your life are actually thinking and respond and how they're responding to different emotional issues. So having a varied amount of people in my life to date <laughs> has added levels of colour to that that I wouldn't have had but for those people in my life. You know, how have they contributed to your writing style? And I think I've found that my voice is quite urban and quite sometimes quite gritty and really does go to very I guess confronting and polarising issues and character traits. So I think that's because I have sort of lived various different lives before I came to writing. How much of yourself are in the characters? People who watch my plays seem to see parts of me in them that I have no idea are there. But the truth is, and most writers probably don't admit to this, but in every character there's the smallest grain of either yourself or something that you feel deeply about, even in in the characters that are less than, uh, I guess, liked. <laughs> Ones that are sort of more difficult and more challenging. So every now and then, yeah, you do see parts of yourself up there. Playwrights often say you've gotten experiences from your own world and, you know, you put it on stage, although mm -hmm. sometimes it may not be the entire case, sometimes it's a collaboration of works, but then what's it like to then expose a part of what people believe or what is your life? Well, I guess it's quite hidden, really, because people don't know anything. They don't know for sure what's based on something that's real and what's not. I guess the part of you that knows that is always a sort of a bit more vulnerable when something comes up that you know is based on a story that happened to you. Um, and to be honest, by the time you've done your 16th draft, you've lost that grain. Like, you actually see that story as belonging to the character. So you do start to depersonalise greatly by the end of the play. How important is it that the audience feel the same way as uh, the same emotional connection as you do to the characters? Oh, not important at all. Like, as long as they feel an emotional connection or they're moved to question the character or sympathise with the character or even identify with the character, that's brilliant. Um, it doesn't have to be the same feeling that I have for the character. I mean, that's what's great about theatre is individuals bring their own experiences and their own interpretations of character and everything is subjective when it comes to character in so many ways that they bring their experiences, experience the character that you've created. If the character is authentic enough that actually rings true in some way, that means it's successful. How it rings true is up to the audience member. How are you able to create it, that, that sort of that dynamic that people have with a character where they love them or they hate them? I think as long as your character is as authentic as you can possibly make it in the situation you've put that character in and as true to the elements of the character that you've created, then sometimes they're the ones that ring true with an audience. So basically it's about really thinking a lot about a character before you place them in a story, before you start weaving a plot around them. I very much come from character and then the plot comes from the character. And when the audience uh, see your plays, and what do you want them to take away from it when, after seeing one of your plays? And my own personal response is to see the world in a slightly different way and to understand something slightly differently. Well, that sounds incredibly arrogant to think that you could possibly have that effect on other human beings, but I guess at its most idealistic, that's what I love the idea of theatre doing. Not just entertaining, but actually moving someone to a different way of thinking, to a different perspective. What's the opening night like? Depends. It depends whether it's the opening night of the first ever time this play has been produced, in which case it's absolutely nerve-wracking and terrifying. And I have two things that I do. The first is that I either sit with the director at the very back and we both kind of cringe a bit and kind of keep staring at the audience. Or I sit in the audience with my husband and every two minutes look at him and go, is it okay? Is it okay? <laughs> so I think every playwright I know and director I know opening nights are extremely, I guess, challenging because you just don't know how it's going to be received. And sometimes audiences laugh at things that you had no idea they'd laugh at and vice versa, things that you hope they'd laugh at, they don't find the slightest bit funny. I've read only good reviews, but what's it like when you get a bad review? 
you know, there's some value in criticism, even though you always prefer to have glowing reviews. You get something where someone says they had some issues with a certain part of the script, and sometimes they're a little bit right. <laughs> and sometimes they're so right that it actually makes you rethink the way that you did a certain scene or something along those lines. But I don't know, I, I think it's nice to have a healthy arm's length from reviews, whether they're great or whether they're not great and just to see your career as a journey of you developing as a storyteller and telling the stories that you want to tell, rather than thinking that one reviewer's individual response is indicative of a whole audience's response, because it's really just one person, each review. How have you developed as a story writer? For me, I just wanted to write theatre, and I'm not really sure where that came from, but I think I've always loved the kind of live factor of theatre and the fact that the people in the audience participate in the storytelling by their own response and how the energy of the actors change accordingly. Okay, and I think most people that are professional playwrights would say that their first play is the reason that they're a playwright because I think if you have a total flop for your first play, you end playwriting and you go and do something entirely different. But if you have a success with your first work, you have that early taste of what it's like to have something that goes really well and it's very inspiring. How do you research the topics that you write about? That's a good question. It, it depends on the form of the piece. Often I just have an idea for a story and it has an issue in it that needs some research. So I'll either talk to people, go and interview people. Like for example, I did a play about real estate where I went and spoke to about 20 different real estate agents, asked them three, this is the three same questions and had completely different answers to all of them. Cross sections yeah. was a quite um, confronting, sort of newly developed within Australia play yeah, yeah. that was quite new. Um, what drew you to these particular issues? I think I've always been quite interested in people that are marginalised and people that have a voice that's not the mainstream voice. So for that reason I think often my plays are about outsiders in many ways. And possibly that comes from not being part of the general kind of middle class of Australia, like coming from somewhere else into a university sector where everyone came from a generally middle class world. I just find that the sort of marginalised outsider or the person with secrets or someone who's living on the edge is just fascinating to me, so I'm much more interested in delving into their character. What's moved you the most? One was a play where a young girl overdoses in a gutter, basically. And when I went to Sydney University and spoke to the performance um, students there, or the performing arts students there, one student put up her hand and said, oh, I saw the play and my sister died of an overdose in King's Cross about four years ago and I've hated it guts for doing that to me until I saw that play and I suddenly had compassion. And I think that for me was kind of made writing plays completely worthwhile to think that you could affect the way someone viewed the death of her sister so that she had some peace and some love for her sister as opposed to feeling angry. That was, I mean it's a small thing but it felt really remarkable to me. I had a character who had killed a child and he'd killed a child when he was a child himself but it was a really difficult uh, play to research. First of all I spoke to young people who killed children and I also spoke to the families of people that had lost children to those circumstances. That affected me really profoundly although not necessarily in a positive way, but it made me think about rehabilitation and how you ever know whether it's worked or not. So that was interesting. We as people in society don't want to see other people die and you know it's mm. an awful experience really. Mm. How do you maintain a focus when writing without a bias? I don't know whether you ever don't, I think you always have a bias, but you might be more aware of it than you're not. So I think Strangely enough, my bias coming from a criminal advocacy background was to find a way to show an audience that someone who did something at 10 years old after a really hideous childhood was a different person at, say, 30. Having said that, that was my aim, but when I delved into it, I got stuck with recognising that how do you actually know that for sure? And are they a different person? So really, all it did was raise the question. It didn't really answer it. And I think that was frustrating as someone who likes to have an answer, but possibly more authentic because there isn't an answer. <laughs> what are the moral boundaries of your work? I think really what it is is about what you think the boundaries are and then 
pushing that further so that you explore whether it exists for a reason or not. And I think that's what's interesting about writing theatre, if you actually write theatre that questions things and questions philosophies and moralities and social standards and just stereotypes and preconceptions, then you start a dialogue with the audience and between audience members and in, within the community, which is why I think theatre is so important as an art form. It's the original form of collaborative conversational art form where people actually walk away and really have discussions about stories they've just seen and experienced.